When I was building out Tout App, we really had to figure out how would we price our product? Do we do it on a per seat basis, per year basis? Is it $29, $49? So like anything else in business, I tried to find the smartest person I know around pricing. I hit up my friend, Malesh. Malesh happens to be a professor at the Department of Economics. He's now at Rice University. He used to be at UPenn, was a doctoral candidate uh, at Kellogg, uh, worked at Google. But anyway, so I hit him up and I said, hey, I'm trying to figure out pricing. I want to learn everything that I can about it. I need to find a way to actually price this SaaS product the right way. What do I do? Just as you would expect with the professor, he hit me up and said, I got the, just the right thing for you. And he sent me a book. This book somewhere over here. This is where I keep all of my books that I use to build Tout App and everything else that I learned. And sure enough, here we go. He sent me this book, Principles of Pricing. Now, this is not the thickest book that I've seen on pricing. I know that there are much thicker textbooks that exist, but Luckily for us, we have a copy of this book and I'm gonna walk you through it. When you open up this book, it goes into all kinds of details. And here's the, here's the crazy thing about business, whether you're building a SaaS business or any other kind of startup, all these little things that we deal with, whether it's pricing or it's product or it's marketing, there are deep bodies of knowledge that exist in all these things. There's an entire book that is principles of pricing. And when you look at this book, it literally, goes into buyer behavior, estimating pricing response, uniform posted pricing, auctions, pricing and competition, bringing it all together. There's a bringing it all together section right here. On this episode, I'm gonna be walking you through the principles of SaaS pricing, but don't worry, we don't have to go through a complicated book. Luckily for you, I've lived it for nearly 10 years, so I'm gonna walk you through the four principles that you absolutely must know when it comes to pricing your SaaS product. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, author of the book, How to Punch the Sunday Jitters in the Face, entrepreneur and angel investor. On this channel, I help startup founders like you quit your jobs, start SaaS businesses, and thrive in both your life and your business with an unstoppable strategy. I bring an episode to you every single Sunday with TK Energy, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you're new. And if you're back and you're a subscriber, welcome back. On this video, I'm gonna be walking you through pricing strategy for your SaaS business. One of the toughest things to actually figure out when you're starting your SaaS business or scaling it is getting your pricing strategy right. If you just go with something default and don't think deeply about it, down the line, you'll actually stunt your growth and stall out. But if you think about your pricing strategy in a proactive way and you make some decisions early on and keep tweaking them, you can actually accelerate your growth. So I'm gonna be walking you through the four principles that I've learned after operating multiple SaaS businesses so that you don't have to read an entire textbook on pricing strategy like I had to. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button and let's get started. The first thing you wanna figure out, principle number one, is actually figuring out if you're gonna be the cheapest in the market or the most expensive in the market. Now, one of the biggest things to understand is if you're neither here nor there, this is kind of the case with most strategic things, if you're neither here nor there, you end up being a whole lot of nothing to a lot of people. But if you take a position, you end up standing out and going a lot faster. So no one actually ever cares about the second cheapest product in the market. They care about the cheapest product in the market or they care about the most expensive, the most valuable product in the market. And this is why you actually wanna figure out whether you're gonna go after a low cost strategy or you're going after a premium strategy, an aspirational brand, an aspirational product, and you're gonna be the most expensive in the market. If you start to fall in between, there's gotta be a very good reason. There are exceptions to the rule, but broadly, when you're starting out, you either wanna be the cheapest or you wanna be the most expensive. And when you actually make this decision and are very purposeful about making this decision, a lot of other strategic decisions get handled for you a lot easier. You'll know what kind of colors to use in your brand. You'll know what to put on the website. You'll know what kind of customers to go after. Do you wanna go after with aspirational messaging because you're actually the most expensive? Do you wanna highlight quality or do you wanna highlight value 
and ease of use and low cost. It's gonna change everything about your marketing and your sales and even how you build your product or how you capitalize the company. So really deciding on whether you're gonna be the cheapest in the market or the most expensive is super important and never end up in the neither here nor there zone. The second principle, uh, and this is actually kind of, a, uh, kind of a funny way I learned this principle, is if you ever wanna figure out pricing and you're in front of a customer and you're in the early days, the trick, and this is uh, one of my one of my colleagues that I used to work with that Tout App taught me this trick, and we kind of joked about it, but there's some truth to it, is you want to start with a number. You want to say it's 30. It's $30. You look at their reaction. Then you want to add another uh, denominator. You want to say per month, and you look at their reaction. And then you say per user, and you look at their reaction. And then you say per organizational unit or something. The point is, it's there are a lot of levers you can pull to get your pricing down, and you won't really know what exactly is the ceiling for your customer until you really test it out. So for example, with Tout App, we started with $30 per seat per month. Now, it could have been $30 per seat per year, it could have been $30 per month period, but we understood that over time, the Tout App was a sales platform, and they would have multiple salespeople on the platform. So we understood that over time, they would be adding more seats and you want to charge on a per month basis. And we want to make sure that the more successful they are with our product, the more salespeople they're going to hire, the more salespeople they hire, the more money we make over time. So we priced it at $30 per seat per month. And Marketo, on the other hand, we knew that well, the geniuses that started Marketo, which are amazingly smart people, they knew early on that marketing teams don't get a lot of seats. What they do have is their database size, their marketing database that grows over time. They get more leads, more customers, more accounts. And so they priced it as on the number of contacts you get. And they did something even more brilliant. They didn't just say, well, you get 5,000 contacts and that's how we're gonna price it. They actually added another denominator to it. They said 5,000 contacts per org or per region. What they found out was marketers actually wanted a staging environment and a production environment for their marketing automation systems. They also wanted separate databases for Europe and for the US and for Australia and they didn't want it commingling because there were different marketing teams operating and then they wanted a master org. So they actually figured out that it was on a per contact basis, on a per org basis, and they were able to price accordingly. So the important thing to understand about the second principle is figure out what the ceiling is for your customer by adding more denominators. But more importantly, you actually understand what's important to them and what success looks like for them. And you wanna set your pricing strategy in a way where when they're more successful year after year, they actually start to spend more with you. So for Tout App, the more salespeople they hired, the more money they spent on us. The more successful they were, the more salespeople they hired, and therefore they spent more money with us. And with Marketo, the more contacts they added to the database, the bigger the company got, the bigger their database got, the more they spent on Marketo. And on top of that, the more regions they expanded into, the more units they needed to get of databases, and that increased the cost as well. And what this made was we aligned ourselves with success with the customer. We made sure that if we made them more successful, they would spend more with us. And honestly, customers were happy to do that because they were seeing the success from the platform. And what that yielded was more success, a higher LTV, and a higher net retention rate, which is all super important. The third principle I have is you always wanna offer valuable add-ons. So you're gonna have your core platform, and our core platform, we didn't wanna uh, nickel and dime them. We said, like, look, you get all the major features on the platform, all your salespeople will have the same features. Same with Marketo, more or less you got what you really needed and we had different tiers, but it really fit with the evolution of the customer. But we also offered add-ons. The add-ons that you wanna start considering for your SaaS business, the simplest one for most SaaS businesses is your advanced analytics. Offering valuable an uh, analytics is always a great add-on to add. You can add the basic metrics, but if you want management or you want the leader to come in and really dig into the data and get a global view of the data, you can offer that as an add-on. That's like, if your system costs 20K, you can add on another 10K on top of that for the analytics. The second one, as you go up market, go into mid-market and enterprise, you can always offer more enterprise controls and auditing capabilities. It sounds super boring, but it's an amazing money maker because if your software starts to become super important in the enterprise, there will be admins and operations people that manage it and they'll want controls, they'll want to be able to 
remove users and add users as employees come and go. They want permissions and controls. Again, super boring, but it's super necessary in business applications and SaaS applications, so you can actually charge extra for that. The third one that you can also charge extra for, which I actually encourage you to start thinking about, is training, onboarding, and setup. When companies make an investment into your software, especially as you get in the mid-market, upper mid-market, little enterprise, enterprise, those higher markets, they actually want to pay you money to make sure that they're successful. They want to pay you money for the training, for the onboarding, for the setup. Do you know why they wanna pay you money? They wanna pay you money because that way they can hold you accountable to actually delivering value from the system. If training is everybody's job or it's just their job and they don't know the software, it becomes a lot harder. So there's this weird thing that we found at Tout App, at Marketo, every other SaaS business I've consulted with, Customers want success, obviously, but they are willing to pay you extra so that they get that success, so they ensure that success. So there's a human being that'll make sure that the first 90 days is super successful for them. So if you're starting to see this, number one, I have four of these, I just went through three. Number one, choose your exact pricing strategy. Are you going for a low cost strategy or a premium strategy? Actually figure out what the ceiling is and make sure that your pricing model increases the cost of the product as the customer gets more success over time. And number three, actually offer add-ons. And the biggest one being training, onboarding, setup, or analytics. If you're starting to see this, if you're starting to see that, you know what, there's some things I can tweak in my pricing strategy, or you're starting to get a view into how you would charge for it, put a yes in the comments below. Tell me what your current pricing strategy is and what you're thinking it should be. And link me to your SaaS product so I can get to know you better. One of the things that I loved about selling ToutApp when we were selling, selling uh, ToutApp to sales teams was our pricing strategy made it where we could kind of predict how much they would pay year one. It would be like a, for a small sales team, we started at $30 a seat, but by the time we sold the company, we were charging $125 per seat because as we added more capabilities, we just increased the price. We went from 30 to 49 to 79 to 125. So we knew how much it would cost on year one. And for a small team, it would come to like 20K, 30K, something like that. And one thing that I was able to do, and this is something I love and I always want you to do is figure out what business impact your software is gonna bring to them and figure out how much that's worth to them. So I'll give you an example. For ToutApp, I remember I was in a sales meeting and you know we always get to know their sales, their sales funnel and their average deal size, their sales cycle, so we know if we can help them, right? And I remember I was talking to the VP of sales and I was like, hey, what's an average deal worth to you? And they're like, well, an average deal for us is 20K. I'm like, awesome. So ToutApp is gonna cost you 25K. So you're telling me if out of all the reps that you have that's gonna be adopting ToutApp, if only one of them has one extra deal, they get one extra, only one of them gets one extra deal because of all the pipeline ToutApp is gonna generate, it's gonna pay for the product right away more or less, like 5K more. So maybe one and a half deals. And he looked at me and he was like, you're right, like we just need one rep to do one more deal. We already get the return on investment on the product that we're building. And you might say, you know what, that's easy on a 20K deal or 25K deal. Here's the thing, even at Marketo, when we were doing millions of dollars of deals, the ROI still came down to the business impact. And the more strategic the business impact, the larger the deals get because the larger the ROI gets. So for us at the Marketo level, millions of dollars of deals level, we were able to peg it to, well, what is the cost of delivering a great customer experience? What, is that, what does that work to you? What does it mean if you don't deliver customer experience? What does it mean if you're not GDPR compliant? You start to look at these things and you start to see some numbers and you compare it to the value of the deal and almost always we want out. And because of that, customers were compelled to buy because they saw the immediate ROI in their minds. So you got these three principles and if you're starting to see this, if you're starting to get some ideas on how you would tweak it, comment below, I wanna hear from you. And if you haven't smashed the like button yet, please do. Now, here's number four. The number four is uh, enforce a pricing floor. All right. One of the things we did, and I, it wasn't my brilliant idea. So, you know, ToutApp, like, there's lots of parts to that journey. And 
the tout up journey wasn't always perfect. There was one point where uh, the business nearly died and we made some missteps. It was a crazy year and the business almost died. And I'll never forget, I was in a meeting with Ben Horowitz and Mark Andreessen. And we were like, they were like, all right, TK, we just want to, they were our investors. Like, TK, we just want to understand like where you guys are at, what's going on, just so we can help. Like, just, just give us a brain dump. And one of the most amazing things about these people, the reason they're so successful and they're so smart is you can take an area, like I thought about Tout Up day in, day out for years and years and years. And they know about it, and we've had partner meetings where we, I present to them about it, and here I'm one-on-one -on -one with them, and I kind of like walk them through like, all right, well, here's where we are, here's the misstep we made, here's how we're gonna fix it, here's where we're going. And within seconds, they're able to compute all that and actually have an intellectual conversation with me. The problem that Tout App had was we were actually violating the market segmentation rule. We were trying to go after multiple market segments all at once, and our pricing was all over the place. We were trying to do too much all at once. And almost immediately, Ben Horowitz just stares at me. He's like, you know, I feel like 99% of our portfolio problems would be solved if the founders just raise their prices. And he just looked at me like almost like I was, here I was, I was like, I'm gonna get some amazing advice. And Ben Horowitz is like, you should just raise your prices. And it's 100% true. What we did is we went back and we said, you know what? We're gonna institute a minimum platform fee. Meaning no matter what size of the customer, we're gonna say that the minimum purchase price of Tout App, the platform, you get everything, regardless of like how many salespeople you have, is you get five seats plus it's 15K. We will not do a deal below 15K. And eventually we raised that to 20K and then 25K. What that allowed us to do was automatically segment our market to the right size and we made sure that every deal was profitable. Salespeople would not be chasing down deals that would be lower than the lower price, the, the, the floor of the price, and we would never do a deal that ends up messing up our CAC and LTV. I know there's a lot of jargon that I just went through, and if you're new to this, don't worry. I did an entire video on market segmentation that you can check out here or here. I'll also link to it below. It goes into detail on what I just talked about. But for the case of pricing strategy, my principle number four is enforce a pricing floor include a minimum platform price and keep raising that over and over. And that way, what will get you to do is only attract the most successful customers. Here's the thing, here's one thing we forget. Successful businesses will not churn. If they're a successful business, they're more likely to stick around. If you're in the lower end of the market, and we learned this the hard way at Tower Up, the lower end of the market, it's not even your fault. They are gonna go out of business. Unsuccessful businesses will go out of business, but successful businesses are willing to pay more, and they're willing to actually stick with you and actually make a strategic partnership. And when we introduced this pricing ceiling, we got rid of the riffraff. And what we were able to do was focus on the customers that were in it to win it. So to recap, if you are building out a SaaS business and you're like, how much should I charge? How do I go about this? Number one, figure out what your pricing strategy is. Are you going for the cheapest option or the most expensive option? You gotta pick one of the two. And I know it's hard, but once you do it, everything becomes easier. The second thing is figure out how much you can charge. Start with a number and then keep adding denominators so that you set it up where the more successful and results you drive for your customer, the more they spend with you over time. So for us at Tout App, it was the more successful they were using our software, the more salespeople they were able to hire, the more salespeople they hired, the more seats they bought, the more seats they bought, the more money we made year after year after year. And with Marketo, the more successful they were, the more leads they got, the more leads they got, the bigger databases they need, the bigger databases needed, the more they spent with us. And that worked out really well. Number three, offer valuable add-ons that actually increases the use and increases the maturity of the customer. Things like analytics, actual enterprise controls, and most importantly, training, onboarding, setup. Remember, you gotta out-teach the competition, not outspend the competition. The more you teach, the more successful you're gonna be. I talk about this in this other video called The Unstoppable Sales Funnel, which you can check out as well. And lastly, enforce a pricing floor. When you enforce a pricing floor, you're able to increase the quality of your customers. You can start at 15K, then go to 20, then go to 30, then go to 40. Enforce a pricing floor saying, look, the minimum platform price is X, and that will make sure your salespeople and your customers understand where you are in the market and enforce quality. These are my four principles 
on how to actually establish a pricing strategy for your SaaS business. Now, if you're building out a SaaS business, your pricing strategy is just one of the components you need to figure out. There are other components. There's market strategy, there's product strategy, and there's go-to-market strategy. Those are the three pieces of strategy that I define when I work with startup founders like you as part of my Unstoppable Startup Accelerator program. So if you wanna learn more about how to craft a strategy, you don't have to talk to me, don't worry, this is completely free, go download my Unstoppable Startup Strategy Guide. I go through the five key points you need to consider. I teach you how to actually build out a strategy. And at the end of it, if you wanna work with me directly, there's an offer for that as well, but there's plenty of free content in that guide for you to start with. So if you follow the link below, I have the guide completely free. It's a PDF guide that you can download and you can start to craft your unstoppable growth strategy for your SaaS startup. Also, lastly, if you don't have a SaaS startup yet and you're starting to like think about quitting your job and doing a SaaS startup, check out this video that I made. It basically teaches you how to start building a startup without quitting your job. And this video, which talks you through what exactly I would do if I were to start a SaaS business today. So check out both of those videos if you haven't started a company yet. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video and got value from it, please smash that like button. It will mean the world to me and my team. And it just gets our message out there more. I drop a video like this every single Sunday, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon if you're not part of my legion yet. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. But when you are with us, yours is going to be unstoppable. I'm TK and I will see you next Sunday.